on my new lifestyle. My dog seems to enjoy it too. This is the way to treat an ankle spur. Or a heel spur, plantar fasciitis. You need to get in an environment like this. Put your foot on an ice chest and an ice bag. <laughs> so, it's Monday night. I take my daughter out and uh, visit, give her a present, and then take her back to her room. And after I drop her off, I just in this big silver beast of a car just said, okay, I'm just gonna drive west. I'll run into the beach somewhere. Thinking I'll sleep by the beach so I can wake up, right? You know, have a nice, pleasant spot to wake up by. And I just come straight to this dog park beach that has also got two very different types of waves. So you have kind of a right point break over here, right in front of the dog beach. But then over here on the left, you have more of just a typical beach break that the waves fully come in from the south. Um, so they kind of come in on an angle on this beach, but uh, so I'm at Ocean Beach. So man, the waves are big enough to hit the top of the pier. That's so fun. I could kill an hour or two just sitting here watching these big, beautiful waves come in. Tuesday, I went to Black's and uh, it was so big. I just got worked. Um, several times, but um, met this beautiful Nancy girl, 27, and we ended up spending the day together, walking down there together, and she would play with Ozzy while I was out surfing. It was just really um, a nice, pleasant experience. But you know, she's in there doing psychedelic drugs, and she was probably thinking maybe a sugar daddy here, you know, but I let her know that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not the guy for that. But, um, you know, in a roundabout, nice way, of course. Um, so, yeah, just getting used to uh, retirement. I could get used to this. <laughs> uh, just cruising around in a Forerunner. I had the Forerunner stolen. Um, so, today's Thursday, when, uh, Tuesday night. So Tuesday night, I'm in the same area in a big parking lot over here, and um, the, I'm just waiting for the sun to set. It's about maybe 20 minutes before the sun sets, and I'm thinking I'm going to wait till about 10 minutes before the sun sets so I can walk down to the dog beach, let my dog off leash, and let him play and smell other dogs while the sun's setting. So um, as I'm sitting there waiting, a woman pulls up catty corner, a uh, uh, Hispanic lady, and she's giving me weird looks and weird vibes. She's definitely like obsessing on me and, and trying to establish eye contact as much as possible in between her taking big rips of marijuana. I don't know what that was all about, but it was weird. And so instead of waiting 10 minutes to get out of my car, I waited five and I was like, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go a little bit early to check the sunset out. So I cruised down there with my dog Literally 15, 20 minutes max, I'm back at my, I come back and my car's gone. My brand new Ford Runner. It's keyless entry. So me just walking away, someone can jump in as long as I'm still within like 20 yards and push start and it'll start and they can drive off, but they wouldn't be able to start it again. Um, and then I, I'm pretty sure I turned around at 20 yards and set the alarm. But I've owned this car about a month now and I haven't heard the alarm go off once. So today I put the alarm, I started jumping up and down on the back bump, bumper and the alarm wouldn't go off. So apparently my alarm doesn't work. Kind of strange on a brand new, very expensive Toyota 4Runner. But um, so that's neither here nor there. I just thought, am I wigging out? Did I park somewhere else and I'm being forgetful? You know, you had that, I had that little discussion. No, I parked right here. That woman was parked right here. And I'm gonna just have to walk around and look for it, I guess, before I ask to use someone's cell phone to call the police. So I do that. And then I ask someone's cell phone and they say, oh, that's a non-emergency. Here, call this phone number. And she rapidly reads up some phone number. And I'm like, ma'am, I don't have a pen or a pencil. She's like, well, I can't help you with that. I'm like, well, you can't connect me? No, goodbye, and hangs up. 
<laughs> so then I go to someone else and I tell them ahead of time, could you please let me use your cell phone and be ready with a, with a piece of paper and a pen? Because they're going to give me a phone number to copy down. So I did that and then I call this number and I'm on, on hold like 35, 40 minutes. It's kind of a long time to fully inconvenience these really nice kind of modern day hippies and like a full on love bus, like a um, big school bus that's been converted. There's a bitchin' inside, but um, really, really psychedelic hippie type, but very homey and quaint and cozy. Anyways, so then cops come and um, I'm dealing with them for about 20 minutes answering questions and I had to admit that I had my 25 automa semi-automatic um, pistol in the car, which I did not have concealed and locked up properly. I didn't admit that to them, but um, I actually lied and said the, the magazine is locked separately in the glove and the gun is locked in its own case, none of which were true. The magazine was in the gun I had a bullet in the chamber and I did not have a locked case, just a Velcro case. So that sketched me out. I was thinking I might be spending the night in jail tonight. But um, after about 20 minutes of doing this, I look up at the north end of the parking lot and it looks like it's my car. You know, it's dark now. And then sure enough, I put a big Harley sticker on the back window and I, I see a, a sticker right where my Harley sticker is. I can't make it out, it's too far away. But I'm like, I think that's my car. I'm gonna go check it out. I tell, I just start walking towards it. And they're like, grab me. And they're like, no, sir. The assailant could be in there and he's got your gun possibly. So we have to go about this following our procedures. You stay back. So one officer stayed back with me and two officers that were armed and dressed in uh, navy blue walked over to my car and did a full on inspection. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> We meet again. <laughs> and um, so then uh, they inspect the car and they start rummaging through my car and going through it. And it makes me kind of nervous. I think I had an empty beer can and the gun and whatever else. And then while they're rummaging through my car, the police officer with me says, do you give them permission to go through your car? <laughs> like, I don't think they need permission, officer, but uh, yeah, yeah, you got my permission. At this point, I, I could care less what happens to me. It looks like my, I got my car back. Um, so sure enough, it's my car. And they say, okay, don't touch your gun, but go in your car and verify that you have located it. And I did, and I came back out and said, yes, it's there. And they said, wonderful, have a nice night. So they didn't bust me for open container. They didn't bust me for um, carrying a concealed weapon you know, we're not following the laws. Um, and then I go in and there's my wallet. I open the back, I was supposed to have like uh, $65, $65. There's my cell phone, amazing. Didn't take my sleeping bag, my surfboard, my wetsuit, didn't take anything. Just had a joyride, I guess. And the gas didn't even look that low. I think they stopped and, ga and put gas in for me. I'm kidding, but uh, it's bizarre, really, really weird, man. But I'm happy that I didn't even stress at all. Some of these kind of um, flower children were telling me, um, man, are you stoned? You're dealing with this so well. And I'm like, you know what? I paid so much for that car. If I never get it again, I'm okay. And insurance just pays me back. And if I get it back, well, I like it. So I'll be okay with that too. So I'm really okay with however it goes down. The only lame thing is all I had on was a pair of board shorts and a t-shirt and I was cold. And um, the nicest girl that was in that bus gave me a sweater to wear and she, I was using her phone the whole time. So just, I was treated wonderfully by the people that came out of this um, love bus. And I was treated wonderfully and so professionally by the police. I'm even surprised by the individual that had my money, had my car, had everything, didn't take anything. So it ended up just being a really good experience that gave me more faith back in humanity. You know, getting fired for not um, getting vaxxed and 
how I was let go without even a good job after 28 years, you know, getting none of that, you know, that did lower my faith in humanity a little bit, but this brought it back. So, you know, blessings in disguise. I get them all the time, you guys. But we have to look for that silver lining. Anyways, just thought I would share that story with you. And I'm um, loving retirement. I need to get that word out there because you guys are my YouTube family. And I've posted a few videos where I'm not hunky-dory and everything is not copacetic. But um, I'm past that and things are beautiful. Hit like, dislike, leave a comment. And uh, get towards retirement, man. This world is going so bonkers that it's so much nicer to be in retirement while the world goes crazy around you. Adios, amigos. Talk to you later.